Good morning, odd people. I hope you're doing well. Uh, it's uh, really uh, not easy uh, supporting a stock that is on this uh, downtrend day after day after day, you know. Um, and, and, the, and the idea is not necessarily to support the stock and justify the trend. I said it a few months ago that NEO is in the hands of shorts. Even when Xpeng was going up, even when Li Auto, even when uh, any of the stocks that did not make any sense to be up, were up, uh, NEO was singled out to be pressured. It was clear to me, even when Chinese stocks were up, NEO was pressured. And, uh, but anyways, it, it, it's whatever mechanism there is actually, um, William Lee was asked in the past, well, why, why the stock is down or whatever? And, and he, his answer was, well, there is a mechanism in the U.S. He called it mechanism. You know, that's, that's a professional, uh, you know, wording to it. It's basically in the hands of shorts and the shorts are doing, they are having a feast. They are enjoying every second of it. And we, you know, investors, uh, we are paying the price. Actually, I feel um, I rushed a little too early when uh, stock broke the seven. I thought it will rebound back, you know, whatever, but uh, as, as it did in the past, but this time, no. Anyways, um, so that's one. And the, the fact that Hong Kong Stock Exchange uh, uh, is actually as its uh, lows uh, for the last two, uh, uh, you know, decades, that, uh, that's not helping, <laughs> of course. But there are also catalysts that we have to keep in mind, and we may have to visit some of these in, in details. Um, the, uh, the first catalyst is that um, the European Union Commission probing into Chinese stocks. And the issue is not um, price war or whatever. I mean, even in China, the, the one who started the price war is Tesla, not, uh, not, not Neo. But the, I think the issue is the is the very existence of the uh, European automakers. And I don't think anyone wants to, uh, you know, to, to challenge that. I don't think anyone wants to hurt, uh, uh, you know, European automakers. That's not the intent. Uh, so I think that uh, this, this, is, uh, this is one issue. And I think the European Commission... Uh, representatives or whatever they are in China or they will be in China or something like that. So that's one. Uh, the second one is that uh, the Chinese officials themselves think that this expansion uh, should be reviewed. You know, they're doing their own work into that. And the justification, justification is that, the, that there is no sufficient uh, um, demand, consumer demand, for uh, you know, outside China, for for the power of these uh, companies. So, so what happens is, you can see in their deliveries, in the Chinese deliveries, in in, in Europe, for example, the their deliveries. Some of the companies are really low, really low, and so uh, you know. When you see something like this, I think uh, David David uh, made this comment, and thank you, David, for for this. Uh, it actually um, says that, um, that they will do something about that. And it's really my honest opinion that, the, that NEO will benefit. In my opinion, NEO should not have been in Europe. I really was not happy with um, uh, NEO's expansion into Europe. Okay? Uh, first of all, the time they started was the time they needed cash. They needed funding. And so they were weak from that regard. The other thing is that um, they, they need to, when you expand outside your own uh, country, you need to have solid footing in your country before you do that. You know, it, it doesn't make sense to, to expand when you, you can't even compete against your, your peers, right? So uh, now, of course, NEO uh, can challenge its peers and, and has the best model, but it was too early, in my opinion. Excuse me. Excuse me, it's too cold here. Uh, so, 
so this expansion into Europe is, um, um, you know, uh, to me was questionable. Actually, even the CEO himself, he said that he was not in favor of it. Even the CEO himself, but then somehow the board decided that um, they should do that. And I think part of the reason why they did, the, did this is because of this competition among Chinese companies. See, there's fierce people think it's China versus uh, US West, and that's not true at all. It is also uh, Chinese against Chinese. <laughs> you know, you would see a lot of Chinese companies going bankrupt because of this fierce competition. So when when they compete in China, right, and then and one of them decides to expand outside China, others follow because they still want to compete. They don't want others to have, uh, uh, you know, uh, an edge or something like that. I, it's all competition. It's part of the competition, I think, that pushed Neo to uh, to get uh, into an early expansion in, in, in Europe. It's, it's my opinion. By the way, there's never financial advice. I'm just, you know, uh, chit-chatting with you guys. Okay, so that's the, the you know, we, we talked about European uh, Union Commission. Uh, probing. We talked about the Chinese themselves, the Chinese officials themselves looking into uh, into these things as well. And uh, the third thing we have to keep in mind, especially for this week, is uh, Tesla's earnings on Wednesday. This is really big because Tesla's earnings, uh, Tesla is the leader. So, so if Tesla goes down, it might uh, pressure other stocks, even though uh, no, thanks, Tesla. We don't need any more pressure. We, we are automatically pressured, so we, we are fine. But uh, it is something to keep in mind. Um, uh, but if you look at Tesla's um, stock price uh, uh, trend, you know, stock, pri uh, stock price behavior over the last uh, few weeks, you would see that it's been going down a lot. And ever since Tesla reported the the quarterly, the fourth quarter deliveries and the and the year end deliveries, uh, the stock took uh, a down a downturn, right? And uh, and I think it lost something like twenty percent or close to twenty percent. So one of the good things from Tesla's earnings is that the stock uh, already corrected somewhat. For, for 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 the uh, value uh, so that's for that uh, the other thing about the um, the earnings that maybe I should mention this is actually the forecast there's a few things you really have to look for for the earnings if you are a Tesla um, investor uh, the margins for the for for the vehicles in uh, uh, or the gross margin for for Q4 right and that would that would give you an indication of uh, the impact of these uh, price cuts uh, and also the forecast for, for 2024. If the forecast is light, it could give maybe false indication that the, or the entire EV uh, market is, uh, uh, for forecast will be low. And that is not necessarily true because Tesla has been having difficulty in China and Tesla is the one who started these price cuts. They started them late in 2022, and uh, and they uh, and and really forced everybody to follow and created all this mess. But in my opinion, Tesla had no choice, really. To be honest, Tesla had no choice but to do these price cuts. Otherwise, they would not sell the vehicles at the high prices that they were at. So the price cuts were necessary for Tesla. Uh, and so anyways, so it's something to keep in mind. The, uh, the last thing I want to talk about is, is Elon Musk's um, uh, voting power. Uh, Elon Musk um, has something like 12 or 13 percent of uh, he owns like, uh, of the company, right? As far as shares, I think he has options as well. But but he doesn't, he, he's asking for 25%, but he doesn't have 25%. So, so, okay, what do you do? What do you do? It's, uh, uh, I think it's an issue 
because he wants to be relevant in Tesla. That's why he's asking for 25%. He wants to be influential. He wants to be relevant. He doesn't want to be um, you know, vulnerable in the sense that uh, uh, shareholders can vote him out. If he has um, a small percentage, such as 13% or 18%, then uh, all you need is uh, double that, which would be 30% or 36% to vote him out, to actually override his decisions, right? So, so he doesn't want to, to be in that position. He wants to be uh, the big man in Tesla. And um, so we'll, we'll, see, we'll see how this one goes. It's, it's anyone's guess. I, I don't know. Okay, so this is the catalyst, a lot of volatility. Um, and I thought that you guys keep these uh, in mind. And, uh, but the, at the end of the day, really the, you know, the big guys make the decision of uh, what happens with the stock. It's clearly being annihilated and uh, there's not much we can do. There was a suggestion uh, to uh, do um, what buy 10 shares or whatever i think this is this is not going to do anything <laughs> you know we're talking about uh, you know 166 million shares being shorted so we so if you do the math for you know small number of shares even though we could be i don't know tens of thousands of people i, I don't i don't think i think we need big guys to buy or or neo which maybe everyone is waiting so it doesn't matter it doesn't matter we we're getting used to it anyways. Okay, that's it. I hope you have a great day. Never financial advice. Thanks. Bye-bye.